morning, everybody. Good morning over here. And to the world, good morning. I wanted to thank you all for praying for my wife. And as you can see, she is back here. But, oh, we are so glad that you came. And hopefully that you are doing all right today. So, as you can see, this topic for t today it says, it's very interesting. I think this is a good topic, especially for those who are new year, in our new year, uh, 2018. So let us come together as one. Now, <coughs> you know, I know this topic will include the people into the world out there as well, as God is encouraging all of us in the church and outside of the church as well to become one. You know, I want to say something. Congratulations and praise to the Lord that we have two people who wants to become our brothers and sisters this morning. Let's give them a hand to both Max and Deborah Stevenson. We are very happy that you are joining with us this morning. So, become our brothers and sister in Christ. So, we need to try to encourage each other to get more visitors to come and hopefully they, they will join to become our family. This will please God more. Okay, so back to the lesson. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading in the book of Psalms chapter 133, verses 1. Short and simple. So, before we're reading, here's my outline that we're going to be doing. We're going to be reading in the book of Psalms 133, Verse 1. And the first question is, what does this title mean to you? Many people always say that God is not important. Jesus is not important. The Holy Spirit is not important. The church is not important. Many people think that way. But we, as a brother and sister in Christ, must not give up. L. This is very important to keep our faith faith and to become more stronger in faith in God. Now the next question, it says, what was the problem? We'll be sharing that in just a few minutes. What is the problem? The problem within the church and the problem outside the church. So many people don't think that they have the time saying, oh, I tend to do this. We are all good people, but guess what? We forgot that we do have Satan that comes into the church. And as he tries to destroy us, it's true. I'm serious. So we should not be blind at all or become deaf. Oh, I can't hear. I've never heard of that word. Well, guess what? We cannot be dumb if we think that we are dumb, we are fooling ourselves. Ah, okay. Now here's another one. Why is it important to have unity or united? Why is that important? We as a group of one become the body of Christ. What Brother Gordon said during the Lord's Supper was perfect. Very, very important for all of us to know. People are like, I don't know what that means. I'm still learning. That's fine. You're still learning, but, you know, keep learning until you fully understand. And then finally... How does the Bible describe 
that unity should exist between Christians. Many people don't like to learn new words or new meanings. No excuse. God loves us all. He loves us all people, including children in the world. Now it is time to read. In the book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1 says, Oh, whoa, oh, how wonderful! How pleasing it is when God's people all come together as one. Wow, I feel like I've got goosebumps already. <laughs> that is God touching me. I hope God can touch you, especially the people in the world. <laughs> I can say, oh, I love my brothers and sisters here. I love my sisters. People, don't forget, we do have brothers and sisters in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ that are out there in the world as one. Can you imagine God send Christian people to different places, especially on mission work, those who are working on mission trips? So, here we go. Now, for this topic, what does, we're going to know what this meaning means, okay? And for this topic, it says, let us come together as one, unity, family, and God's family. Look at me. Unity. What does that mean? Cooperation, and I hope that you all, we would have cooperation. For example, Brother Gordon say, explained this morning about our brother Lewis Perry and Sister Raylene Perry. They both moved back over here with us to join in our family again. Both are going to help us so much by visiting people out there. Our brothers and sisters who are not able to come in because they, they've been missed or known as shut in. Sometimes they disappear or haven't been coming because they're sick or for different reasons, things like that. So we need to bring our lost sheep back. But we all need to continue to pray for both of them. Because this self is not that easy at all. Alright? Look at D. It says fellowship and I hope that this deaf ministry does not limit to the deaf people also. You know that all must need to change their attitude. You know, like they're having a little secret group over there. Oh, back away, back away. I don't even know you. No. They will God are God are already seen everything. You know, there's a lot of groups out there. Group over here, group over here, group over here, especially women's prefer women. Men's prefer men. Hearing prefers hearing. Deaf prefers this. Heart of hearing prefers that. You know, they they need to prefer different things. That needs to stop. God is seeing everything in our church that is happening. Many churches aren't the ones that are out there doing it too. God is watching us. He's watching us all. Even Christ Jesus, who is Lord. Jesus, God's son said, hey, Jesus, you know, I'm your daddy. I have power. I want to give it to you. I want to give you my power. You control the world. 
Only one Jesus can save us. Only one. Not ourselves. Only one. Jesus can. The last one says teamwork. <clears throat> now what does that mean? It means the ability Oh, you know, some people, they get tired of being put down, put down, put down, put down. But, God, it doesn't matter. Deaf, hearing, hard of hearing, black, white, pink, it doesn't matter. Different color, it doesn't matter. We're all equal to God's eyes. You know, Hispanic and black, white, it doesn't matter, including... I need to change my attitude, especially everybody else here. And it's perfect with God's eyes. Perfect. Finished. Thank God for the Lord's Supper. Please forgive me. Any mistake I've done, be with me to spread your word and to preach it. And especially the people in the world that are watching on YouTube. Wow. Wow. You know, it's true. That's what we need to do. We need to continue to pray. We need to listen with our eyes, listen with our ears, listen with our heart. At the same time, and I hope and pray that my voice interpreter over there it's paying attention and voicing everything of what exactly I say from God's word. It's not my word. It's the same thing what Gordon says during the Lord's Supper. It's not his word. We are God's soldier. God's people. Meaning that we need to learn how to love each other. Teamwork means work, work, work. Together for God. God knows that I cannot force, 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 force everybody in the teamwork. The family is weakness. And I hope that one of you who are weak can come forward. The weak ones may be learning a lot, but once you become stronger, <coughs> Then, we need to give them a time to cooperate. It's important to help each other and support each other. Right. Now, what was the problem? We need to apply. According to the application in the Bible, it stated, Unfortunately, unfortunately, unity does not abound or show in the church as it should. You could say, oh, church should not have a piano. Or... You know how they have those organs right there where you can feel it? You should not. You should not. Oh, I like, I, like, I, like, I, like, I like the music. I like the drums. I like the guitar. Inside the church? No. No, but <clears throat> God prefer to use the voice singing or acapella. Acapella. Sing in your heart. You know, like this harp, but it's a different time. Now the time has changed. We need to sing with our hands. So, or voice, that's right. Hand to use it with voice, hand. Or without voice, To use our hearing song. You know when the hearing sing, the deaf song, 
They can use either way. It doesn't matter. As long as there's no music with respect. We have to respect with each other. Okay? B. Most people disagree and cause division over unimportant issues. You know, we always tend to fight, 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 fight. Don't do that. It's important that we need to do these things together. C. Some delight or the feeling of great pleasure. Oh, I'm proud. You better follow my way. You should not do that. You should be humble. Sometimes you'll probably improve and then get together, what? you know, to lead in burning. Instead, a feeling of great pleasure and satisfaction can, in causing tension by discrediting of other, you know, like they're going to be embarrassed or mad. That means for all include the preachers, deacons, elders, brothers, sister in Christ. Why? Because God himself sees everything. Why is it important to have unity? So we can support each other. A. David stated that unity is pleasant and precious. It helps to make the church grow successfully. You know, we're all united. And again, brothers, sisters, and new members, those who have not yet come to church that are lost, we need to help each other. We need to ask them what happened. Oh, are you upset? Oh, we need to pray for them. We need to do all that right there. So that way, they can come to church. Unity is most important <coughs> because it makes the church a positive example to, to the world and helps draw others to us. The church name is God. You know, in our deafness and hearing out there, do gossip. You know what that means? Gossip. 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 Hey, crash, crash, a church crash, wow. Long time ago, they used to be small. But you know what? When Roy prayed for them two, them two right there, they prayed for many, 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 many years. They said, help. You know, they try to help. They try to help. Hearing ministry is easy. Oh, it's because they're so large out there. But we need hearing people, hearing church, to help us to support the deaf ministry. Some people, oh, I'm sorry, but no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let them take care of themselves. They, they know how to do this stuff. They know, they know the people over there and so on. But we need to have them continue to pray for us, okay? It don't matter, no matter what, we still need to have them pray for us. And we should not make our feeling kind of nervous, you know. Later on, deaf ministry will shut down. Don't think that way, okay? We need to pray for ourselves. Pray for the deaf ministry. We need to pray for the world. We need to pray for the church. Okay? So, we can draw others to build God's house. You see, there's all these 
those empty chairs. Look around you. We need to do that. We need to fill this up. Now, B. We're still on why is it important to have unity. It says, unity is important because it helps us to cooperate as a body of believers as God meant us to. Giving a foretaste of heaven. Now, wait a minute. What does that mean? I mean, heaven, wow, it is so, so beautiful. That's what Gordon just recently said. Our goal is for all of us to get to heaven. Number three. It renews and revitalizes ministry because our deaf ministries, we need to be uplifted. Uplifted. We need to be lifted up. Because we need to make what? Less people out there to not freeze up or hold on to the problems that they have or think negative thoughts, things like that. Negative, you know, attitude. Negative um, uh, way. Uh, it's not easy to do that. We all should, those who are finished taking the Lord's Supper, should know how to pray. God. If you don't know how to pray, please look at that little poster over there. How to pray. You all should know how to do that. Get to know us all. Sometimes people don't even know God. They need to get to know him is very important. Number three, it renews and revitalizes ministry because there is less tension to sap, destroy our energy. Negative ways, negative attitude, negative habit, it can hurt us. Can. And even, even gossip inside the church or outside of the church can help us more. You know, it needs to stop. This needs to stop with all the negative gossip. They need to come to church and learn more and more. Saying, oh, that's good. They have different class. Plus, keep holding the old habits. Don't do that. Let it go. Let it go. Change and improve. People inside the church fight, 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 fight. Then they go home and they say, oh, guess what? They still contact on video phone or tech or say, hey, 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 I'm going I'm to I'm do, do this. I'm going to do this being a bully on there. Stop it. Stop the negative stuff on the phones. Now, how does the Bible describe unity that should exist between Christian and all of these Bible verses? You know, we need to be positive. Christian, positive, positive. Christian, positive, positive. Christian, positive, positive. Christian, positive, positive. All should be positive between Christian and Psy. Some Christians say, oh, my sister over there, uh, 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 I get tired of it. No. Meet that sister in private and resolve that problem immediately. All five Bible verses is related to what we can do to improve. Alright, so we're going to be reading a lot of Bible verses, all five. It says, John, the book of John chapter 6, verses 48 to 51. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors are the manna. Jesus is the bread of life. Your ancestors are the manna. 
was a bread that God gave them in the desert. But it didn't keep them from dying. The Jewish people would follow Moses. They did die. Why? Because they were angry with each other. And they died. How? They got bitten by snakes, by poisonous snakes, and it killed them all. Because they were so negative, they were following, obeying different people. You know, God let that happen. But, whoever follow, can you imagine following God? You know, we have to follow Jesus. So, <coughs> on 50, here is the bread of life. Here's the bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will never die. So whenever we take the bread and take it and eat it, will not die. Our spirit, as Brother Gordon says again, when we die, secondly, the second death is what? It's the soul goes back to God. Well, Christian unity is based on each person's connection with Christ, including the people into the world out there. Each person's connection with Christ. So we all have Christ inside of our heart. Three and one, right there. We should let, listen to your heart. And let Jesus control our life. Control our minds. Control our spirit. Should. Now, in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 11, says, Now I am coming to you. I will not stay in the world, but those, these followers of mine are still in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, then they will be the one, just as you are, you and I are one. Now. Jesus is saying that. So we all are together with Jesus. Now how does this apply? Jesus' great desire for his disciple was that they would become one. If all came together and agreed together to live as one big family, God will be blessed about this. He will pour down that blessing really much. Romans chapter 11 verses 12 says that their mistakes brought rich blessings to the world and what they lost brought rich blessings to the non-Jewish people. Surely the world will get much richer blessing when enough Jews become the kind the people of God, the kind of people God wants. How does this apply to us? Many people are so proud because later when they think that God looks at, at Jews, he knows he blesses them. But anyway, how does this apply to us? In Christ, unity has been made possible, but it has not yet been fully achieved. God himself has noticed something. Jesus told Jesus to go into the world and save them, to save our world, and it's still going on. Jesus is still with us when, whenever we end. When? Nobody knows when the world will end. The Father is the only one. He's the only one that knows. So, in the book of, chap the book of Philippians, chapter 1, Verses 9, this is my prayer for you, that your love 
will grow more and more, that you will have knowledge and understanding with your love. How does this apply to us? The love commanded by Christ should create deep unity among Christians. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, it says, Think about what we have in Christ, the encouragement he has brought us, the comfort of his love, our sharing in his spirit, and the mercy and kindness he has shown us. If you enjoy these blessings, then do what will make my joy complete. Agree with each other. And show your love for each other. Be united in your goal and in the way you think. How does this apply to us? Unity ought to be distinctive or different. Mark among Christians. There are different Christian people out in the world than in here. So, as we close, as you may notice, today's lesson is encouraging everyone to us to become one into God's family. So again, as you know, unity is important because it makes the church a positive example or role model to the world. As we show it out to the world, and then it will help us to draw others to us. Now, unity also helps us to cooperate as body of believers. As God meant us giving us foretaste of heaven to get a better place <clears throat> and here on earth too. But still, we must live for Christ. You know, we need to work for Christ. We need to do things for Christ. And then three, it renews and revitalizes ministry because there is less tension to sap or destroy our energy. It can destroy. Now, Brother Melvin, please say the thing.